Hi, I'm Cordell. I'm part of the Turkey Applications Group. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to configure Web Server 2.0. So today, we are using our TBEN L4 AIOL IOLink master block. We're using our new Hydra M12 core set to connect in our um, QR20 inclinometer with an IOLink output. So let's go over to our computer now. And in your favorite browser here, you'll type in the IP address that you have set into the block. Right now I have it set to 192.168.1.100. And the web server should pull up right away here for you. Um, you should see a picture of the device that you're using right at the top there, as well as the part number. Um, the first thing that we'll do is log in. By default, the password is password, all lowercase, all one word. And that'll allow us to actually make some changes to the parameterization of the device here. And first, we'll just go over the first page that we see here. This is the gateway information. So just list out some of the basic info about the block, about like the um, part number here, the identity number, your current IP address, Mac ID, as well as the firmware revision, Ethernet IP, Profinet, and Modbus TCP revisions, as well as um, your RG revision. Um, next, we'll go over to kind of our just general tab here. You can see that we have our section on the gateway diagnostics and parameterization, and then local I.O. So we'll keep just working through the gateway. You can open up the parameterizations tab. And here we have all of the network information. So it starts out with your MAC ID again, your current addressing mode, it's currently in rotary, um, your IP address, net mask, default gateway, and all of that good information. And then we have some parameters that we can set for the specific communication protocols. So we can deactivate any of the specific protocols if we want to, such as Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, and Profinet. Um, for the specific protocols for Ethernet IP, we can activate the control word or the status word or turn those off if we wish to. Um, for Modbus TCP, uh, we can set our watchdog timer here. We can change our uh, write permissions. Um, under the Profinet configuration section, this is where you'll put in your Profinet device name. Uh, that is a common um, issue that people run into is not setting the device name. So this is where you'll do it for your device. Um, you can also turn off your diagnostics, uh, set your behavior communication for communication loss, and then some of your just reboot access down here, whether you would like to factory reset, do a network reset, or just a general reboot. Next, we'll go to the diagnostics tab. And this will let us know if there's any sort of errors with the device generally, such as under voltage for either of your voltage groups, if you want a V2, whether you have an internal error, um, if you have an RG project running on the device or not. Uh, this is also where we'll get some of the information about our Ethernet communication. Um, we can see our RX frame counter and our TX frame counter here. This can actually be very useful if you're trying to troubleshoot a network issue. Um, you can also see that we have this for Ethernet port 2. I don't have anything hooked up to that currently. So you can see that that's all zero and it tells us that it's disconnected. Next. We'll go to the event log, and this is just exactly what it says in event log. You can see that it um, noticed that I logged in a couple of different times here, changed some of the diagnostic information, and that's all tracked here in this log. You can also export this log if you're keeping track of that. Next, a couple quick ones that we'll just barely touch base on. Um, whether you want to export these um, files or not, these parameterizations for this block, you can do that here. 
You can add a description. Um, next we'll go to change password, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is where you can change your password. As you can, as you saw at the beginning of the video, the default password is just password, which is not the most secure. So if you want to change that to anything else, you can do that on this page. And lastly, in this section, we have the firmware tab, which is just tells you which firmware is running on the block and you can upload new firmware um, from here. Next, we'll go into our local IO section. This is where we're actually parameterizing the individual ports on the block. Um, so first here, we'll just show you generally for port one in our IO link master. You can see that um, at the top here, we have just the different IO link port parameters. You can set the operation mode, um, whether you will want it in IO link without validation, um, IO link with identical device, or just simply as a standard digital input. Um, you can change your cycle time. Uh, I would recommend to generally just leave that as automatic. Um, you can indicate whether or not you are using GSD files to parameterize the device. Um, here we also have some diagnostic information, whether or not you would like um, your diagnostics turn on. You can turn that off by clicking yes. You can leave it on by clicking no. You can choose to get notifications or notifications and warnings if you want that. Then you can also generate diagnostics about your process input data if you wish to. And lastly, perhaps one of the most important bits on this tab, you can alter your process input data mapping. So generally it's set to swap 16 initially, and you can change this to direct, swap 32, swap all, or the default swap 16. Um, this is very useful if you are getting process data from your device that doesn't really seem to make sense. Generally they'll just entail coming in here and changing to one of these other options. Now, just to give you an example, we'll go to one of our DXP channels here. And for this, you can essentially just activate the output or not, um, or choose to have a manual output reset if there's an overcurrent. Then, just to show you everything, we'll go to VOX control, and then you can set whether or not you want to just be 24 VDC, switchable or off for any of your um, auxiliary power outputs. As you can see, it tells you the specific pin and port that you're working on there. Next, we'll go to the Diagnostics tab. And this is exactly what it sounds like, Diagnostics. Um, you can see for your global I.O. here, it's talking about your auxiliary pins. It will let you know if there's an overcurrent for any of those. Next, for your I.O. channel here, it'll let you know if there's wrong or missing device, process data invalid, hardware error. As you can see, there's a lot of different potential diagnostics that you can get from I.O. link. It'll show you the number of uh, frames sent, number of wake-up signals sent, and all of that good information. By far, the most useful generally is just this di diagnostics right at the top, wrong or missing device, par parameterization error, over temperature, some of that basic information. And lastly, your DXP pin is just telling you whether or not there's an overcurrent at your output. Next, we'll go to our input tab. And this will give you your um, input data and we'll break it up by words, let you know if there's a um, digital input, and if you are getting data, it will tell you that your data is valid. For your DXP, it will just give you whether or not you are seeing that digital signal or not. And then you can go to our IOLink event tabs. All these will give you any event codes that you're seeing. Next, I'll go to port eight where I have our device plugged in here so you can see. You can see that our data is valid, so it's telling me that, and then it's giving us our process input data in words here. Um, this is currently in hex.
Lastly, we'll do our module state uh, input. Um, you can see that under voltage at one is turned off, under voltage at V2 is currently active. And then it will also let us know if there's an RG program running on the device. Go to our output tab here, and we don't have um, any outputs turned on right now, but you can see here that similar to your input tab, um, it has it broken up by a word and it will let you know um, if you have any values there. For your DXP pin, it, again, it will just tell you whether or not your output is turned on or not. And for your auxiliary power control, you can manually turn those on here as well. So this is for your specific auxiliary power pins. Lastly, the info tab on here. This will just, again, give you um, general uh, info about whatever device you have plugged into your port. For example, I have our inclinometer plugged into port eight here. So it gives you your, our vendor ID, the device ID, um, your process data length for input and output, and uh, your average cycle time. So next, I'm going to hop over to documentation first here at the top. Um, and the primary two tabs that are most useful under here are your Ethernet IP memory map and your Modbus TCP memory map. And these go in and tell you exactly where you can find specific data from the device. Um, so you can see here, port one, IO link channel zero. It'll give you word offset, bit offset, and then bit length. And this is extremely useful when you're trying to configure this um, in a PLC or something along those lines. And just to show you this as well, we do have the Modbus TCP um, data map as well. Next, we'll hop over to the IODD configurator. It initially is looking at port zero where no device is plugged in. I will unlink our IODD initially. So as you can see here, um, without the IODD loaded in, uh, we're just getting some basic information about the device, such as um, the product name, product ID, cycle time and some of the other basic information. Um, there's only a few other tabs up here currently that you can see. For example, it's giving you your process data, but this is still in hex, which obviously is hard to read um, initially. And we can see our event history. But when we go in and load in our IODD file, we can do that by pressing the web search button up here at the top. And this will go to the IODD website and pull in that file directly into the web server. And now you can see that we have a lot more um, configurable options than we had before. Uh, we have parameters, uh, it'll give us the process data structure, it'll give us diagnostics. Um, not much has changed on the information tab, but we can go over to parameters. Now we have the option to uh, adjust these as we'd like. We can choose to have signed or unsigned process data. We can teach in our center point. We can choose whether or not we have clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. And all of these parameters will be dependent upon the specific device that is plugged in. Um, you can go to our diagnostics tab. As you can see, nothing much there for this device currently. Observations, this tells you just some of the uh, cyclic data that's coming from the device, such as the temperature, the number of operating hours, and the angle that you're currently seeing. We can also view our data directly. Um, here it's giving our process data, and now you can see that instead of being in hex, it's actually giving you a decimal value, which is a lot easier to read um, when you're just doing initial configurations like this. Go back to the top here. I'll tell you your process data structure, um, give you your offset, length, and uh, data type. Let you know how to access that information. And then some of the same 
we've seen before were active events, event history. And lastly, they have the connections tab as well, where it'll tell you the exact wiring that your device needs. And now you know how to configure an IO Link device and web server 2.0.